This is ABC 15 Mornings. A child shot and killed. We're live at the scene with breaking news. Linked to the Ku Klux Klan. This is a very important conversation to be having at this point in time. School names could be changing in one valley city. What happens next? We're prepared for diplomacy. We're prepared for aggression. We're prepared either way. The U.S. says Moscow could attack at any moment. Baseball owners and players meet today. Is there any chance to save spring training? Swings it across to Cam. Let's it fly. Make it seven straight and wins. Our sons now get a week to relax. A much needed break. And you're going to hear from Devin Booker a little bit later talking about that much needed break. That's right. But first, let's get right to breaking news this morning. Glendale police are investigating a deadly shooting involving a child. This is near 65th Avenue and Bethany Home. Our Amelia Fabiano live at that scene. So what are police saying happened? Hey, good morning, Nick and Kaylee. So we can confirm it was an eight year old girl who was shot and killed during this situation. And we actually moved locations from earlier in the morning to show you what area is closed right now. You can see this is Bethany Home Road right near 59th Avenue. That's the intersection. You can see it is shut down between 59th and 55th Avenues, but the scene actually started further west by 65th Avenue and Bethany Home Road right near the Solano Point apartment complex. Complex. That's where police responded to a shot spotter call just after midnight there. When they got there, they were able to find one shell casing in the street. And then about 10 minutes later, they actually got a call from a man at a hospital who let them know what had happened, saying an eight year old girl who was inside a car had gotten shot. She was inside the car with her mother who was driving and her younger brother. The mother was going to pick up her boyfriend at that apartment complex and that boyfriend apparently had some sort of a verbal altercation with a suspect in a vehicle at that apartment complex. And then when he went to get inside the car with the mother, they started driving away. And at some point that shooting happened, that suspect vehicle shooting at the other car. The only person who was hit was that eight year old girl. And sadly, we can confirm she died from her injuries. The mother drove straight to a nearby hospital as soon as it happened, and that is where she was pronounced dead. A very awful situation. Police have not been able to confirm a suspect or a car, a vehicle that was involved in this. That's what they're working to piece together right now, and they have been clearing sections of Bethany Home Road throughout the morning as they uh, move on from the investigation and clear those sections. And it is worth mentioning, part of the investigation is likely happening at this hospital right now where that car likely is located since that is where the suspect shot into and that is where the girl was hit. So there are a lot of pieces to this investigation. And as we get any updates from Glendale police, we'll be sure to update you. Reporting live from Glendale this morning, Amelia Fabiano, ABC 15 Arizona. Back to you. And Amelia, because of how big that scene is, it's causing some traffic issues as well. There's a hospital uh, there right at 67th Avenue in the 101, not far from there, but still it makes sense as to why that crime scene is so large. Want to get you to Megan Thompson because traffic could be impacted by this. In fact, it looks like it is. Absolutely, and I've been talking with Amelia behind the scenes, getting those updates from her on the ground. Here's what you need to know if you're a commuter in this area. It's Bethany Home Road between 59th and 56th Avenue as some parts of this investigation have reopened. However, I would highly suggest that you just avoid this area altogether and take other major intersections to get to where you need to go. So that would be heading northbound to Glendale Avenue or going southbound to Camelback Road. You can also utilize 67th Avenue northbound and southbound or 51st Avenue. Again, that scene, you just want to avoid it altogether as crews are working and likely will be for quite some time this morning. McDonald's down Road and 67th Avenue right near the freeway. We have a crash and your speeds are beginning to drop on spots like the I-10 and the 17th southbound. So we'll get an updated look at those desert drive times and traffic predictor in just a few minutes. But in the meantime, we do want to get a check of that most accurate forecast. Iris has that for us. Let's talk about it, Megan, here on this Thursday morning. Our storm system from yesterday and a wave behind it, keeping the rain and snow around overnight. And this morning, maybe while you were sleeping, we still had some showers around the valley. I was tracking them earlier this morning across the Phoenix area, mainly near our foothills in that Northeast Valley. But what you're seeing now on Desert Doppler radar is that rain has ended. The clouds are also clearing too. Now to our southeast, still a few light snow showers down near Safford as those clouds continue to push to the east. But all in all, things are
things are starting to wind down across the state and we've got drier air moving in. That'll bring more sunshine today, but keep those cool temperatures around, although it's not going to be as cool as it was yesterday. As you step outside, though, that temperature down into the 40s, so maybe a heavier jacket as you start the day. We'll stay in the 40s through that 8 o'clock hour, then start to warm a little faster than yesterday into the 60s by lunchtime and our high today, 67 degrees in Phoenix. So again, a few degrees higher than yesterday, but still pretty cool overall. But we've got a weekend warm up. Look at temperatures by Saturday and Sunday, mid to upper 70s. Make plans to be outdoors because then we've got another storm coming our way next week. I'm going to show you the changes that will bring in that full seven day forecast. 605, could the MLB lockout end today? The players union in the league are set to meet again with the players expected to give a proposal. The workouts for spring training were supposed to be happening right now. And the first games were scheduled for February the 26th. The head of the Cactus League tells us all 10 ballparks in the Valley are still ready to go. Well, leaders in the Tempe Union School District there, elementary, I should say, school district, they're going to hold a public meeting today. It's the first one, and it's all about talking about renaming three schools that have ties to members of the Ku Klux Klan. Our Jamie Warren is live. She's at Hudson Elementary School this morning, where the meeting is going to get underway. Good morning. Good morning, Kaylee. So anyone is welcome to attend tonight's meeting here at Hudson Elementary School. It's open to the public. You do not need to have a child who attends this school to give your opinion. And how this is going to work is they will have some comment cards here. You can fill that out. They will also have city and district leaders who will explain this entire process. So the informational session at Hudson Elementary is tonight at 530 Gilland Middle School is February 23rd and Laird School will be on the 24th. You can also go to tempeschools.org to take a survey if you can't attend one of these meetings. The district is also in the process of creating committees made up of parents, students, alumni, community members and employees. Those committees will then present all feedback and their opinion to the school board on March 16th. That is when the board will vote whether or not to move forward with this renaming process. So here is what the board's vice president had to say about this plan after it was presented to them at a recent meeting. I appreciate specifically Dr. Driscoll that you are taking into consideration the broader sense of what a community is, that it's not necessarily just the neighbors. This is a broader conversation. And I know as a um, longtime history teacher and uh, that this is a very important conversation to be having at this point in time. And I did speak with the district spokesperson. She wanted to clarify that no decision has been made just yet, but that is where your feedback will come in. It is ultimately, though, going to be up to the board to make this final decision. Kaylee. All right, our Jamie Warren live this morning in Tempe. Well, the fight over expanding the school voucher program is now heading to the Arizona House. The state Senate just approving a bill that would give up to 85% of public school students eligibility for what would be called empowerment scholarship accounts. Now, the proposal adds any student whose family qualifies for food stamps, welfare or subsidized housing, along with children of police officers, firefighters, doctors and nurses would be eligible. Phoenix police need your help this morning tracking down two drivers involved in a deadly hit and run crash. Investigators say back on January 29th, Virginia Tarango was riding a bike on 43rd Avenue and went to cross the street when she was hit by a dark colored sedan or SUV. Then she was hit a second time by what a witness describes as either a white Chevy Tahoe or a Cadillac Escalade. Officers say the lack of surveillance video in this area and vague vehicle descriptions are making it very difficult to try to track down these drivers. And drivers, if you travel on SR 377 between Heber Overgaard and Holbrook, ADOT, they really want to hear from you. They're conducting a safety study to identify trouble spots and find ways to improve the area. It's expected to begin in the spring and wrap up early this summer. State lawmakers giving ADOT about $140,000 to fund this research in the last budget session. ADOT says they'll be looking at past crashes and current traffic conditions like speed and volume and any planned construction or operational changes, but public input will also be a big part of their evaluation.
information. You can give your feedback through an online survey. It's available in both Spanish and English. We put a link to it in this story on abc15.com slash roads. And you have a road issue or a question? You can always call 833-AZ-ROADS or email roads at abc15.com. It was a close one, but the Suns extending that winning streak to seven. They beat Houston last night, 124 to 121. It's a nice way to kick off a week long break for the NBA All Star game. Fans really getting behind our hometown team, too. The Suns have now sold out their last 16 home games. That's saying a lot compared to where we were just a couple of years ago. You know, we're all waiting, too, to get an update when it comes to Chris Paul. With an injury to his right hand during the game, he's scheduled to have an MRI later today. Officials remain on high alert about Russia and Ukraine. Up next at 613, the latest details and mixed signals on what might happen. Plus, student debt getting wiped out for more than 15,000 people. Why specific borrowers are receiving their forgiveness at this time. And the American workforce. Has it changed forever? There's a new survey taking a closer look at whether remote employees, maybe you, want to go back to the office or not. And let's see, take you live rather to the loop 202. These are the westbound lanes, the off ramp near McGallops Road, where we're having some kind of police incident. An ambulance has just arrived on scene. So we'll get you an update on this and those other traffic troubles still ahead. It's almost 614. We've got some breaking news to share with you. This is the East Valley. These live images here showing Mesa police investigating now an officer involved shooting. And as we show you these images, you can see the light rail station there. If you look very closely here, and this is at the intersection of Alma School and Maine. We know the suspect shot has died. No officers were told are hurt, but they say it is an active scene. So the entire intersection again at Alma School in Maine, it's closed. And I do know our Jamie Warren is headed to the scene right now, so we'll bring you an update shortly. Meantime, more morning headlines to get to. The White House says Russia moved about 7,000 more troops closer to the border with Ukraine. That's in addition to the 150,000 already in place. All of this is the push for diplomacy continues. Today, Vice President Kamala Harris is going to be in Germany for a security conference with European allies. And the UN Security Council will debate the Minsk agreement between Russia and Ukraine that could end this conflict. The Department of Education approving $415 million to forgive student loans for nearly 16,000 people. Officials say new evidence shows some technical schools may have misled students into loans by not being honest about accreditation or the percentage of students who find work after graduation. Rising inflation not slowing shoppers down. The Commerce Department says retail sales in January jumped 3.8 percent compared to the month before. That's the largest increase since last March. Spending at restaurants, though, dropped slightly, almost 1 percent. Well, February, it is Heart Health Month. And one really easy way to help your heart, that would be holding the salt. Cutting back your intake can actually reduce blood pressure by up to 10 points. Certainly some people can have a more dramatic effect on blood pressure with weight loss, but you can see the most bang for your buck is really in the low salt diet. It takes a while to reset your taste buds to get used to that lower salt diet, but you can really make up for any flavor deficits by using more spices or more herbs. I gotta tell you, as a recovering salt addict, lime juice works on a lot of stuff, okay? It's amazing. Health, not, that, not as amazing as salt, but you know, we can try it. Uh, health experts also recommend trying sodium-free flavorings, again, to replace salt. So as we work to move through and pass this pandemic, one thing a lot of people wanna hold on to, be working from home. A new survey by Pew Research is finding about 60% of those asked, they wanna keep working from home all or maybe most of the time. 64% say remote work has improved the work-life balance and about a third cited childcare as is an issue for returning to the office. Plus Iris, I mean, you know, you can get all your laundry done. <laughs> right? In between meetings, you just throw yeah. in the washer. You know, I agree 100%. And I love the balance, right? I think yes. that's what a lot of folks are looking for. And you know, on a morning like today, it might be nice if you work from home because then you don't have to venture out to the cold conditions if you live in the high country. Chilly weather here in the valley. And we're also going to deal with some icy spots up north too. So I wanted to give you a heads up on high country travel conditions. While the rain and the snow has ended, 
limited across most of our state, including here in the valley and in northern Arizona. For the most part, you may still encounter some icy spots because what happens is we see some melting oftentimes on those roads and then as temperatures drop overnight, that melted snow refreezes, creating slick conditions, possibly some black ice. So use caution as you're heading out the door here this morning. Otherwise, we should see conditions on those roads improve in the high country this afternoon. Just some breezes, abundant sunshine. And as you're thinking about the weekend, if you're heading up to the high country, we've got gorgeous weather up north for the weekend. Things will change next week, but at least for the weekend, things are looking good. As you look at Desert Doppler radar with me again, just some light snow showers in that southeast pocket of our state and a little light snow shower south of the I-40 here early this morning. Otherwise, clearing skies across Arizona and clearing skies here in the valley after tracking a few light showers overnight and early this morning. That clearing trend will continue through the next few hours and then we'll see mostly sunny skies for the rest of today, tomorrow and into the weekend too. Temperatures are still colder this morning than 24 hours ago. I mean, we're talking a difference of 5 to 15 degrees in most of Arizona. That puts spots like Flagstaff at just 15 degrees right now. 23 in Window Rock, it's 28 in Payson and Phoenix. Now down into the 40s. Casa Grande, good morning, you're at 42. We've got mostly 40s across the Phoenix area, so that's why I said a little colder this morning. Maybe grab that heavier jacket as you get ready to step outside. Now, if you're planning for work today, a heavier jacket this morning, maybe just a sweater through the afternoon. It's not going to be as cold as it was yesterday, but our temperature is still below average with a high of 67 degrees, and I think we're going to see that high temperature at around 3 to 4 to 5 o'clock here this afternoon with temperatures in the 60s through 8 p.m., then another chilly night ahead. 30-year average is 71 degrees, so we're talking highs in the mid to upper 60s, still below average today. Across Arizona, 70 for Lake Havasu, 53 in Sedona, and only in the 30s in Sholo. Winds will be a factor again along the upper Colorado River Valley, gusts near 40 miles an hour breezy in northern Arizona with some occasional breezes here in the valley this afternoon, but pretty light, not too strong today. And then temperatures are back in the 70s tomorrow. The weekend looks gorgeous in the valley. Highs in the mid to upper 70s, 50s for Flagstaff. But then look at these changes. Another cool down, more winds and more rain and snow by next week. ABC 15 Desert Drive Time, sponsored by Accident Law Group. Taking you to the north part of the valley near the north stack. This is a view, wow, of all those flashing lights blaring right in our face here on the I-17 northbound near Deer Valley Road. So this is off to the right with many of these lights blocking that right shoulder. We also just had a DPS trooper that was blocking the left shoulder. I did just watch them drive away. So at least that is open for you as you're passing this scene. Likely some folks tapping the brakes as they're moving through and make sure you move over over at least one lane with all of those first responders out there to deal with this crash. That is the law here in Arizona. If you can't move over, you have to at least slow down. I-10 eastbound near Dysart Road. We have a crash that is actually on the exit ramp with a few emergency vehicles there too. So be alert if you're traveling in that area. And if you are getting off the freeway, maybe use Litchfield or Bullard to get around that one altogether. Taking you to the East Valley, Loop 202 westbound, the Red Mountain Freeway near McKellips Road. We have a crash in that area. An ambulance was on scene just a few minutes ago, so you could take McDowell Road as an alternate to avoid those flashing lights. Also, Main Street, the road is blocked at Amos School Road. That is due to that police investigation, Kaylee, that our Jamie Warren is headed to right now. I'll leave you with a look at those desert drive times. We are in the yellow on the I-10 eastbound from the 303 to the mini stack at 30 minutes. All right, it's been a busy morning here at ABC 15. So we're learning more about that makeover at Paradise Valley Mall. Developers are sharing some details about the property and its new name. Wait for it because, you know, people are going to be like, hey, I'm going to PV. Yep, that's the new name. And it will feature upscale apartments, three restaurants, and a dine-in Harkins movie theater. The first phase of the project is expected to open by the middle of 2024, and other phases will include a Whole Foods and a pretty big park. Wow, okay. It's a lot be the of stuff place going. to be in yeah, PV. There's a lot of stuff going on there. I, I really like the chilies there, so I, I hope oh, yeah. that I hope that it's stays. It's busy. Yeah, sure it will. Yep. Hey, from living on a prayer to answering someone's prayer, ahead at 6:25, how Bon Jovi is about to give local bands the opportunity of a lifetime. Then love and logins. Sometimes you really need to separate the two. Ahead at 6:38, why more couples should start thinking about a digital divorce. And stand by for turbulence at 644. Fists are flying and airlines say something needs to be done to get passengers to be more grounded. Question for you. Did the Phoenix Open get you hooked on golf? 
You know, they really do play golf out there. Did you know that? On the bulletin board this morning, you can actually work on your swing for free. This is the final weekend for teed up mini golf at Tempe Marketplace in Desert Ridge. Uh, marketplace. So clubs, balls, and scorecards are going to be available on a first come, first serve basis from 3 to 9, Friday at Desert Ridge, Saturday at Tempe Marketplace. Save your scorecard and you can get deals from restaurants and shops like 15% off your entire purchase at H&M or maybe a free appetizer at the Thirsty Lion. Some free fun. That's today's bulletin board. Meantime, Bon Jovi helping to give you a shot. The rock group is heading out on tour this spring and they're inviting local bands to submit audition videos for you so you can perform for them. They'll choose one band to open each of their concerts. So just apply wow. at bonjovi.com. What an opportunity yeah. of a lifetime, right? Rock Lobster. <laughs> it's like one of our favorite stories of the morning. A Valley teenager going viral on TikTok after sharing a video when he figures out and discovers that his dad's unreleased music from the 70s is super cool. So I caught the eye of ABC Late Night host Jimmy Kimmel, who invited them to be on and perform on his show last night. What a moment. So they're called Fire City Funk, and you can watch their full interview and the performance on the Jimmy Kimmel Live YouTube page. I, like the dad's got the Elton John glasses. Yes, he's and like, the hair yeah. on that Terrell. He's ready to go. This, I, this is great. <laughs> the I love it. The backup singers are rocking too. Yeah. I, Jimmy Kimmel loves Phoenix, so he, well, any chance he can to show Ties to the Valley, yep. exactly. Yep, Pizzeria Bianco as well. Next at 6.30, the debate over cannabis. Should it be legal across the country? We'll go in-depth on the mixed signals over marijuana and what it means for our veterans. Get a big check in the mail? Don't cash it. I'm Investigator Joe Ducey with what happened when one man did before he knew what the check really was. After our roller coaster temperatures took us down into the low 60s yesterday, we're going to start to rebound today, upper 60s and 70s. Tomorrow, a warmer weekend, but another storm inside. I'm tracking it for you in that super seven day forecast.